I did want to take a brief moment and look at three-dimensional structures of the alpha and beta anomers of glucose just to really give us a sense of how alpha and beta are defined and how we can recognize that by thinking in terms of the Fischer projection. So here we have the alpha anomer, alpha D glucose. And let's talk about how we know, first of all, that this is a D sugar and how we know it's alpha. Okay. To find out that this is a D sugar, we need to find the bottommost quote unquote stereocenter, which corresponds to carbon five. It's that carbon right before the CH2OH carbon. So we've got this carbon that's kind of in the bottom right here. I can't really circle it in this, in this viewpoint, but the CH2OH carbon, that's carbon six. Carbon five is the one right next door. And we can assume a viewpoint where we're looking at carbon five from a Fisher projection sort of point of view. Let me see if I can turn this around to uh, really achieve that. This might be easier said than done. You may need to turn your head slightly, but this is about the best I can do, and you're going to need to turn your head sideways for this. But if you turn your head sideways so that the CH2OH group is at the bottom of your field of vision and carbon-4 is at the top of your field of vision, you'll see that that well, it's, this, it's an oxygen now, it's part of an ether now, but that cyclizing hydroxyl, that hydroxyl that was linked to carbon-5 that's now part of an ether, is pointed to the right. This is a D sugar for that reason, right? That, that hydroxyl group linked to carbon-5, that's the bottommost stereocenter in this molecule, it's pointed to the right, and so this is a D sugar. Now let's look at carbon-1 to determine whether we're looking at an alpha or beta anomer. Well, carbon-1 is the hemiacetal carbon, and this is the most reliable way to spot it. It's the one carbon linked to two oxygens in this structure, and that is this guy that's right front and center in front of our faces. And to determine the configuration there, we're going to put that cyclizing oxygen at the top. And I've done that here. I'm going to put carbon-2 at the bottom, and look at where that hydroxyl group shows up, to the right or to the left. The other thing to note here is, based on the conventions of the Fisher projection convention, that carbon at the center is closer than the top and bottom carbons, right? Those three carbons form a point that's pointed out directly towards you. I colloquially refer to it as the ass-out hug, with the horizontal bonds coming out to hug you and the vertical bonds back away from you, like this, if you will. And uh, we can see that it is uh, the, the hydroxyl group is on the right-hand side here. And so it's pointed in the same direction at carbon-1 in the Fischer projection as the hydroxyl group or cycli cyclizing oxygen, whatever oxygen-containing functionality we've got there, at the bottom-most stereocenter, which is carbon-5. So this is the alpha anomer. Both hydroxyl groups, both oxygens, pointed in the same direction at carbons-1 and 5. Now let's look at the beta anomer. The beta anomer is still, this particular beta anomer is still a D sugar. And let's verify that really quickly by looking at carbon five. So carbon five here is, again, the carbon that's closest to the CH2. And I'm gonna try to kind of jiggle this around to give us a Fisher projection viewpoint of carbon five. If I can manage it. All right, again, you're going to have to turn your head sideways, but with the CH2OH at the bottom, carbon four at the top, the oxygen is pointed to the right. This is a D sugar. That, high, that oxygen at the bottommost stereocenter is pointed to the right. Now let's see what's going on at the anomeric carbon, the hemiacetal carbon, the one carbon in this structure that is bonded to two oxygens. And again, by convention, we're going to put that cyclizing oxygen at the top of our field of vision. And we're going to put carbon two at the bottom of our field of vision. So here again, you're going to kind of have to rotate your head a little bit here, but that cyclizing hydroxyl group is kind of in the top right. And then we have carbon one and then carbon two. And notice that carbon one, that new hydroxyl group is pointed to the left. That's the opposite direction of the oxygen at carbon five. So this is a beta sugar because the newly created hydroxyl and the hydroxyl or oxygen at the bottommost stereocenter in the Fisher projection are pointing in opposite directions here.
The representations we've been working with so far that have this kind of flat hexagon but drawn at an angle with the H and OH bonds and CH2OH groups drawn straight up and down is known as a Hayworth projection. And it's a common way of representing sugars. We will sometimes omit the hydrogens just for clarity, but generally H and OH groups are drawn either straight up or down in a Hayworth projection. Hayworth projections are relatively easy to convert to cyclic Fisher projections, which are less common nowadays than you used to see. Um, but we can, it's to, to my eyes anyway, a little bit easier to imagine how to generate a Fisher projection at each of these carbons from the kind of flat Hayworth projection relative to the chair, which is more physically accurate, more in the spirit of organic chemistry, we might say, are these chair structures. They're more akin to the actual three dimensional shapes of the molecules. And the chair conformers have axial and equatorial groups, just like you've already seen in organic chemistry one. So the, the one thing about pyranose chairs that's worth noting, actually, is that they contain an oxygen within the ring where a cyclohexane would contain like a CH2 or, or just a carbon, right? And that oxygen has some subtle effects that we'll touch on a little bit when we talk about the anomeric effect, but nothing too profound for our purposes. These chair structures help us see why beta d uh, glucopyranose is the major anomer of glucose in solution. Notice that in this structure, all of the groups are equatorial, but the alpha anomer has an axial hydroxyl group at carbon one. The equatorial hydroxyl group in the beta anomer makes it more stable than the axial hydroxyl group in the alpha anomer, which is engaging in destabilizing 1,3-diaxial uh, interactions with the other axial hydrogens. So fundamental organic chemistry at work there. The axial OH group is less stable than the equatorial OH group in the beta anomer. 